Now as we get started, let's go over course prerequisites and the setup that you'll need to work in the same environment that you see me working in in the video. First up, you need to have a really good understanding of HTML. Now, if you don't know what HTML is and you've never used it, I would suggest that you get your hands on, you know, teach yourself HTML in 24 hours or three weeks or whatever it is. You might want to grab just an HTML for Dummies book and just get the basics down on it. This is the markup language that we use inside a browser. And this is what tells the browser, such as Internet Explorer and so forth, how to make the web page show up. But understand, you don't have to know HTML to totally understand and get anything out of this course, but the better you understand HTML, the, the more you're going to get from this, because I'm going to do a lot of comparisons between XML and HTML, simply because HTML has kind of been the standard out there in data, especially on the, on the web for quite a while. Scripting, the more you understand about scripting as well, the more you're going to get some of the pieces of this, especially when we get into XSLT and some of the transformations. You don't have to be a VB script guru or a JavaScript freak to be able to, to really get a lot of out of this. But again, the more you're comfortable with scripting, the more you're going to understand, especially when we talk about the document object model and SACS and some of that stuff. So again, if you're not familiar with scripting, I don't want to scare you off, but just understand when we get to those places, you may have to watch the video a couple of times to understand what's going on. Now, the web browser, we're going to be viewing XML through the web browser uh, most of the time in this course. Now, I'm going to use Internet Explorer 6.0. You need, and I would strongly suggest that you have Internet Explorer 6.0 on your machine. Now, you're going to see me jump out there and open some things up, like in Firefox, Mozilla's Firefox, uh, maybe in Avant and so forth. But for most of the examples that you're going to see here, Internet Explorer, now there's one good reason for that. Now, for all the people who like to bash Microsoft, and especially in the XML world, there's tons of them. You may be one. That's fine. But Internet Explorer so far has provided some of the best functionalities and support for XML technologies. Now, we'll talk about differences, and yes, I know about the differences where Microsoft kind of shoves uh, ideas out there that aren't standard. We'll talk about some of those issues as we go through here. But let me show you. I'm running Internet Explorer 6.0 and let me jump out to my desktop. And I want to show you how to make sure you're running Internet Explorer 6.0. I don't want to assume anything here. This is an intro course. If I double click Internet Explorer, you'll notice I'm connected to the Internet. If I click on Help, and we're going to get all these pop-ups. On, on Help, if I come down to About Internet Explorer, You'll notice here it's telling me this is version 6.0 and I'm running Service Pack 1. Now, if you don't have that, go out to Microsoft's site, download Internet Explorer 6.0 or later, put it on your machine, and your examples will work just great, just like mine. Well, if mine work great, uh, you'll see the good, the bad, the ugly here. One of the things you're going to learn about XML, it's a very particular uh, language. And so I'm going to show you some of the good, and the bad, and the ugly so that you'll learn from my mistakes as well. So, with Internet Explorer installed, then you'll need to use Notepad. Now, what I'm going to do with Notepad, and the reason I'm using Notepad is because you need to understand XML. There are some fabulous tools out there, and I'm going to show you some in the course. XML Spy and, and some other ones, but you need to understand XML. If you've ever built a web page using Microsoft's front page, it's great. You can drag and drop and you can make everything sing and hum. The problem is, is when you get backed into a corner, you need to really understand that HTML to be able to get in there and fix some things. And if you don't, you're just kind of, you know, in trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Notepad because it's very generic. It's free. It's on your system already. And let me show you a little trick that I'm going to use throughout the course here. So let's, again, go back out to the desktop. You'll notice on my desktop, there's a new text document right here. And the way I put it there, and what I'm going to do is I'll just double click this and open a, a notepad and begin to write XML. If you will right click on your desktop, go to new and choose text document. And if you click on that, that will put a text document on your desktop and you can work from there. And we will just kind of throw files out on the desktop. It's not the neatest, cleanest way, but it is the easiest way. And that's what we're after here. So that's the prereqs and the setup. You should be ready to go now, so let's take off.